Welcome to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series, brought to you by the C.T. Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. We're having a conversation about work-life balance, how to navigate and overcome challenges within your career, and how to make business more accommodating to a diverse workforce. Welcome to the Working Wisdom Podcast. My name is Hava Schultz, and I am a marketing major and a sales minor here at the University of Houston. I am currently a Disney College program participant, so I have been, so I'm hosting from Orlando, Florida today. But enough about me. Today we have Kelly McCormick, Managing Director for UH Red Labs, Professor of Technology Entrepreneurship and Woman in Entrepreneurship, a course she started here at Bauer, and now also host of the Art of the Side Hustle, a new workshop series that focuses on how to start a side hustle to make extra money. So Kelly is here with us today to talk about this new endeavor regarding side hustle. So to start us off, Kelly, I've given a brief description of your current roles, but would you be willing to back up and tell us a little bit more about yourself as well as how you got into the tech startup area? Sure. Well, first of all, hi, Hava. Thanks for having me here on the podcast today. Uh, and so just to give you a background on myself and how I got into this space, it kind of starts a while ago and is this crazy convoluted road that I didn't really expect to land me here, but it did and it's wonderful. Um, so I graduated with a degree in finance from Miami University in Ohio, and I almost immediately realized I didn't want to work in finance. So I did a year of AmeriCorps and that was wonderful, but I also realized quite quickly that I wasn't going to go the nonprofit route either, as far well, especially the um, one that I was working with. Um, I just wanted to do some. I wanted to explore other areas, and so I signed up to go to. Well, I shouldn't say I signed up. I applied to go to law school, <laughs> and decided to go. And so I went it to Tulane University, uh, and I went from 2010 to 2013 in New Orleans, and I loved it. I had a great time. Um, I thought that law school was. I know this sounds crazy to say, but I thought it was really fun. Um, I enjoyed the classes. I really enjoyed the background of law, the policy of law. Um, found out I did not enjoy the practice of law. So I uh, did take the bar in California, and I practiced for a really quick minute there, and then ended up getting into or working at Stanford uh, as a temporary job, and just realized how much I loved working at schools. and specifically in, at, in Stan at Stanford and in that whole area, there's a really strong culture of entrepreneurship and um, this job became available and I applied and it just worked out really well and it's uh, gone in a lot of directions that I think are really great and um, really fun and I did not, again, I did not expect, but I've been having a real blast doing it and uh, yeah, that's how I landed here. That's awesome. And on that note, could you tell us a little bit more about those courses that you teach, being the technology entrepreneurship and the women entrepreneurship classes? Sure. So, a little bit more? of course, uh, I teach intro to tech entrepreneurship, uh, and that mm -hmm. is a class designed for anybody that is interested in startups or interested in tech entrepreneurship and doesn't know where to start. So they don't necessarily need an idea, um, don't have a team. They're just, just really interested in learning more. And I've tried to focus the class more on the uh, process of coming up with good ideas, so how you ideate, how you use design thinking to create products and uh, services and apps and devices and all the stuff that people will love and will love to interact with. Um, so how do you actually think of those products and how do you build them? And then we mm -hmm. also have a pre-accelerator class that's kind of a complement to that class. It's not taught by me, but it's intended for people that have an idea. And I'm only saying that to say that if you do have an idea, my class wouldn't necessarily be the best point to start. The pre-accelerator class would probably be a better location, especially in the spring semester, because we're offering in the spring semester, and both of those are intended to get uh, students and faculty members uh, introduced to Red Labs, which is our startup accelerator, and that is a more robust program and immersive uh, experience where we're literally throwing a ton of resources and anything we can help I think we can do to help you launch a startup. We're doing that over the course of the summer, of the summer accelerator program. So it's three months. It's very intensive, and there's a lot of curriculum. There is a course component to that as well, but it's optional. It's more just a resource for any student or faculty member that wants to launch a startup. So okay. um, the reason I started Women in Entrepreneurship was actually, well, the reason Women in Entrepreneurship was started by the department, and I think 
somewhat pushed by me was because I was doing a lot of complaining about <laughs> how uh, the summer accelerator program I had to spend with, you know, 99% men. And I looked around and thought, I really think there could be more women involved. I think there's so much potential for women. I talk to women all the time yeah. that are interested, but don't necessarily know where to start. And I just wanted to see what I could do to push more women to get involved. And so this summer we had our first fully female team, female founded team. So I'm really excited wow. about that. And we had more women in the program this summer than ever before. So I think it's moving in the right direction. Of course, I think that there's so many more women on this campus and throughout Houston, throughout the country, the world that could do amazing things. And they just, I think this course, it well, my intention for the course is to help push them to get them there. So to believe, have the confidence to move forward and to give them some of the skills and understanding that they would use later on when they're launching their startup. That's fantastic. I loved hearing your answer about that. And now that we've gotten the gist of your background, Let's get into the meat of today's conversation being side hustles. Cue the ka-ching sound. <laughs> so side hustles. I would love to start off by actually just hearing your definition of a side hustle. Sure. So I think there are a few different ways to determine, decide on, or to define side hustle. Uh, I think there are some people that would define it just extra cash, um, extra income flowing in from your full-time job or from your full-time class schedule. And I think that that's very valid, um, but I really try and focus side hustles or focus um, pursuing side hustles that you have an interest in, you have a passion for, uh, that would uh, potentially identify and hone some skill sets you have and want to want to move forward, move along. So I'm really interested in those kind of side hustles that you can figure out what you what you want to do, what you're good at, and and use that opportunity on top of either your full time class schedule or full time job to you know, see how that could expand and to, to do it with a little bit of stability. Um, I really think it should should hopefully enhance your life and not necessarily feel like you're working all the time and feel like it's very detrimental and difficult. Um, I want it to be something, I think it should be something that people are passionate about, especially because I just told you this whole crazy convoluted path that I went down to find um, what I wanted to do. And I really feel lucky that I, you know, kept pursuing options, kept trying to do things that I thought would be interesting and I, I landed in something I really love, but I know that not a lot of people feel the security and, or, the, uh, or have the ability to move around like that. So I think that right. side hustles are a good way to pursue what you want to do, figure out what you want and, you know, have the ability to move forward in your career in a more meaningful way, especially in college, when you're in college. On that note, what is the difference between a side hustle and a hobby? Is it just money or... Can all hobbies take on the qualities of side hustles? Where is that line, or is there a line? That's a great question. I mean, I think in some ways, every hobby could be a side hustle. I think some of them would be a little bit more difficult to make into a side hustle. Uh, but I would say that the the line would be, when you call it a side hustle, it would be something that is making money. Um, but like you said, I think most side hustles could be made into or, or, or most hobbies could be made into side hustles. I'm trying to think of something that would be kind of a random hobby like, you know, snowboarding. Now, that would be a little difficult to make into a side hustle, but you could potentially right. get sponsors. I think you just have to spend a lot of time doing True. that, so it might take over more of your life. So I would think something maybe more creative like art, knitting, mm -hmm. just saying a lot of artistic things now coming to mind. Um, I do design work, so artistic thing kind of, things kind of speak to oh, okay. me. Um, but that kind of thing is certainly easier to make into a side hustle, but I really right. think that anything you're passionate about, any hobby you have could be taken that direction. I think you don't have to necessarily turn your hobbies into side hustles, though. I think too many people think, oh, well, I like this. I should make it into something. And, you know, sometimes things are just to be enjoyed, and there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I totally agree. And how did you come up with the idea for this workshop? And more than that, what inspired you and spark your motivation to take to start these information sessions about them. What really got your fuel fired up? Well, honestly, I draw inspiration from other women entrepreneurs, and I specifically follow a lot of women entrepreneurial blogs. Um, the one that I'm thinking, the two that I think come to mind the most when I think about how I want this, how I thought about this series side hustle series and um what i'd like for it to be in the future are brit and co so it's um 
a blog that's dedicated to women makers, actually, and they focus on creating a space for women to learn skills and to learn, um, uh, just to advance their skills and to learn more creativity and how to pursue that creativity and all that kind of stuff to make and build things. And then also Create and Cultivate is another blog that I follow. Uh, and that is an amazing website and community for women that are interested in pursuing creative entrepreneurship. So both of those kind of gave me the idea. And actually, there's something on the Brit & Co. website called The Art of the Side Hustle. And that really got my attention and uh, sparked my my own, I guess, uh, I won't say interest, but but sparked my uh, idea for this kind of um, uh, workshop. And actually, the first workshop was called The Art of the Side Hustle. I think now mm -hmm. I'm just going to move it to Side Hustle series. But okay. I, I think or definitely that's where it came from, is from other communities of women entrepreneurs. That's fantastic. And you, in your answer, you talked a lot about creativity. And my next question was, why do you think there's a growing popularity of side hustles? And now I'm wondering if creativity has anything to do with that. Since so many side hustles are creative um, out you know, outlets. Uh, I think that there is definitely a grow a growth in side hustles due to creative outlets. Um, I think that they're in some some ways related, but I also think that the growth of I don't know how to I'm trying to think of what the best way to say this is, but growth in the recognition of wanting to do something you're passionate about, wanting to do something you're good at, is where side hustles really have or why side hustles really have gained a lot of uh, traction because people are wanting to pursue something that they're passionate about. They're not willing to take a job that doesn't really motivate them or inspire them. They want to be a part of that group of people that say they love going to work in the morning. Uh, and so I think that's really where a lot of interest in side hustles come from. Now, I think that a lot of people are inspired or interested by creative their creative side. So I think that is in some way related. But I mm -hmm. think both of those things are, are very relevant for why side hustles have become more popular and also just people wanting to make more money. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true, although it takes more than just passion to be successful at a side hustle. So what else does it take aside from passion? You well, can be passionate all day long, but unless you have some more qualities going for it, passion's just not enough, right? Oh, what of course. else does it take? Well, I think the biggest part is just actually executing it and executing it well. Um, a lot of people have a passion and they don't even never necessarily ever move beyond that because there's no confidence to move beyond that. They're not confident in themselves in executing it. Um, mm -hmm. They feel like they don't have the skill set. They're not the kind of person that could do these kind of things. And I think jumping in and starting is a good place to start and just doing the best you can and trying to do it well. Uh, taking feedback from the people you're working with in the beginning, letting them know that this is something you're starting on, pers pursuing, and you're you're learning the best way to do it. Um, certainly taking a class, I encourage everyone to take entrepreneurship classes, um, would be helpful in learning some of the early stage things you should be considering when you're starting a side hustle. Um, but I, I really think the most important things you can do are work, do the work, work hard, uh, try and execute in a way that the people you're working for, your customers, will really appreciate and um, enjoy. Thank you so much, uh -huh. Kelly. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Got an idea for a startup? Red Labs is the University of Houston's co-working space, startup accelerator, and technology entrepreneurship program. Supported by Bowers Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship, we work with UH-affiliated founders to turn your technology startup ideas into high-growth ventures. We provide free co-working space, access to mentors and resources in the startup community, and customized startup curriculum. For more information, visit redlabs.bower.uh.edu. We're back again. This is Hava Schultz talking to Kelly McCormick, and we're going to get back into this conversation about side hustles, and we left off talking about passions and what it takes to be successful, which led me to the question of oftentimes people's side hustles are where their true passions are rather than their full-time jobs. And I've always thought this could be attributed to fear or risk or some combination of the two. But Kelly, why do you think this is? And what do you have to say about turning a side hustle into a full-time job? 
So I do think that there is in some ways attributable to, you know, fear and the risk of putting yourself out there. And, you know, especially if it's something you're really passionate about, you're really excited about putting yourself out there and letting people see the things you're working on can be pretty frightening. Um, But I really do think that there is a lot of confidence to be gained from just, you know, taking the first step. And that's why I actually I think side hustles are really important. Uh, if you're going to make entrepreneurship something you're pursuing more fully, you know, making it your full-time career, uh, I think that um, side hustles really do give you the com- if you can if you can execute well on a side hustle, you have more confidence to execute well on making it your full-time job. I actually just read an article about side hustles and they called it bite-sized entrepreneurship, which I thought was really funny. Um, but I got what they were saying. You know, it's it's a way to start entrepreneurship to give you a little bit more trust in yourself and know that you could do something full time. And I think once you have that and you can see um, where your side hustle is going, if you can see a lot of potential in your side hustle, it's easier to make that jump from a small uh, a part time gig or part time side hustle to a full time side hustle. So I think once people can see that it's going well for them, they have more confidence in quitting their full time job. Um, quitting that stable part of their life and pursuing it more fully. Yeah, I actually recently read an article from the New York Post that said 74% of those with side hustles are stopped from turning it into their full-time jobs because they aren't they aren't making enough money to support themselves and it definitely seems like a realistic hurdle. Do you have any more tips on how to handle this quandary when it comes up? So, the quandary, are you asking about the quandary of not being Making able enough to money have... to support yourself, but wanting to, to make that leap, mm-hmm. but not you know plummet yourself into horrible debt or anything else. Yeah, you know, it's a, that's a tricky situation to be in. If you're seeing that you're not going to be able to have the income, if you if you can tell that if, even if you quit your full time job and work it at forty hours per week, you're not going to be able to increase your income meaningfully enough to make up that. Um, what you were making at the other job. If if you're wanting to make the leap, I think, and you're see, not seeing how it would be possible to kind of make up for those gaps, I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's helpful to find a mentor, um, to find people that are doing what you're doing. I found it's like partnering up. Yeah, and getting some advice on what they did. So if somebody else is doing what you want to do, asking if yeah. you can just talk to them, asking if you can have coffee with them, how. Or, offering to buy them lunch uh, can be really helpful in figuring out what are some strategies you can implement to make your own side hustle into what they made their full-time gig into. And I found that really a lot of people are so supportive and want to be so helpful, especially entrepreneurs. You know, they want to tell their story. They want to talk about how they got there and they want other people to be successful as well. I mean, certainly there's exceptions to the rule, but I feel that there are so many people, and especially the people I run into in Houston, that just want to be there to mentor people, to help people, support future entrepreneurs. And so I think that's a really good resource that not a lot of people tap into because it's a little bit nerve-wracking for some people to approach right. someone, especially if they, you know, think that they're someone that they want to want eventually be like them. It's a, it's a little nerve-wracking. Right. Uh, but... I guarantee it is so helpful and it will give you more confidence and to pursue something and also um, some ideas. So I wouldn't stop just because you feel like there's not the amount of money you're looking for. You feel like even if you stop working, it would not give you what the income you're hoping to gain. I would try and figure out some other strategies to make it into what you want it to be. This is great. So basically reach out and tap into your network and this leads straight into my next question which does have to do with networking. And um, so basically, first piece of advice is go ahead and network with people who may have more experience than you, can serve as a mentor. But also when it comes to networking and you're doing a side hustle, especially if it's something to do with sales, um, say you're selling um, something you crochet or anything else, you don't just want to um, exhaust your personal network, but you want to expand that. And so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the importance of expanding networks and how to do this smoothly and creatively to grow your side hustle. Sure. So I completely agree with that sentiment that you do need to expand your network. I think it's really, really important to be 
actively pursuing networking opportunities with people who are interested in the same areas they're interested in. Honestly, this is true even if you're not doing side hustles. I think that it's really important even if you're just, whatever career you're pursuing, you should be talking to other people in your field, seeing what they're doing um, and networking to to learn what, what your next steps could be and to help get people to help, get some help along the way. Um, yeah. But if you're interested in pursuing a passion, it's especially important. And there are a lot of resources, you know, we're in this day and age where Basically, you could Google, you know, knitting side hustle and find a meetup that does this exact thing. Um, and so there are a lot of resources online. There's a lot of resources just for general entrepreneurship. I mean, we have a few co-working spaces in Houston right now. Uh, there are a few groups that meet regularly to talk about entrepreneurship and talk about different strategies for pursuing entrepreneurship and to grow your, your side hustle or grow your um, company. So there, there's a lot out there. I mean, I think that you should certainly be narrowing it down to the area that you're interested in. You shouldn't, if you know you want to be a creative entrepreneur, you should probably try and talk to more creative entrepreneurs. Um, but there's no harm in expanding more. It's just, you should be intentional about what you do, and where you spend your time and who you're networking with because networking can be draining. I'm very very conscious yeah. of that uh, and it, it's it's certainly difficult to go into networking situations especially if you don't know people so I think if you're making sure it's meaningful events and meaningful opportunities for you it makes it a little bit easier and uh, hopefully a good experience for you and you can meet more people and expand your network that way uh, so. quality over quantity yes definitely because you only have so much time don't want to that is so true <laughs> That is so true. Do you want to burn out? Okay, now let's, let's get the real scoop. It all sounds pretty great, but every rose has its thorns. So what are the drawbacks of side hustles? And I'm not going to just leave it there because I would love it if you would then balance with the benefits of side hustles and any hidden benefits that we might not have thought about today. Some drawbacks, some benefits. Sure. So some drawbacks would certainly be, you know, it could potentially take up a lot of your time. Um, always, if you're passionate about it, people you know, say that that's, it's worth it. But, you know, it, it, you only have so many hours in the day. So you're sacrificing something always. So that does that mean you're spending less time um, with your friends, family, you know, less time relaxing on Netflix, which is totally right. valid. I think Netflix relaxation sessions are necessary. Uh, but <laughs> you, you do have to sacrifice that. And uh, it also, in some ways, it is really putting yourself out there and it can really sting a lot more when it's something you're passionate about and, you know, you're not finding any customers or it's really difficult, you're facing some challenges. Uh, right. And there, there's a lot of other tiny little things that come up when you're starting a company. You're always learning something new, always facing new challenges. So there's just, there's a ton of things that potentially could go wrong. But I think what I hear from most people that are pursuing something they're really interested in, pursuing a company that excites them and they're you know, I hate to keep using the word passionate, so I'm trying to look for another word, but but I'll use it again. Passionate Enthusiasm. about Enthusiastic <laughs> about it. Um, that it, it is worth it, but it, it certainly is never, no, no entrepreneur would tell you it's an easy, smooth road. It's always going to be difficult. But on that way, you know, I think that it teaches you a lot of life skills like perseverance oh, yeah. and persistence and how to be confident, how to sell, how to talk to people. Um, there's a lot mm -hmm. of benefits to be gained from pursuing a side hustle beyond just pursuing something that you're really interested in. I think that also, even if you're not wanting to make it into your full-time um, company or something you're pursuing full-time, a lot of the skills that you gain when you're starting a side hustle are so valuable in any company. You know, if you're a quick learner, if you're, if you're you know, taking into account all of the things that are happening with your side hustle and learning from that information, iterating on that and figuring out the best way to move forward. I mean, it makes you into a more creative problem solver, makes you into a more critical thinker. Um, and it's, I think it's very valuable skills to even have in any sort of company that you're working with. So I think it's a great thing for your resume. It's something that I think makes you stand out and makes employers look at you again because they can see that you're pursuing something that you're interested in. Um, there's a lot of companies right now that are really actively wanting more people that are creative and entrepreneurial on our teams and they're looking for those kind of skills uh, and certainly side hustles give you all of those skills so yeah so that's there's a lot more to side hustles than just the money and the process you get a lot of skills you can 
learn from a lot of people. This is fantastic. And it sounds awesome. And it's no surprise because our motto here at Bauer is where awesome happens. <laughs> and this has been a podcast jam-packed with useful information. And I know that I have just scratched the surface um, of the iceberg with you when it comes to side hassles. So my guess is that now um, our listeners are going to be wanting to learn more. So when are the next sessions you'll be hosting in so the series? We actually are going to do a spring side hustle series. So it'll be this coming up this spring. We have a couple other events coming up this fall. So with, with Bread Labs and tech entrepreneurship and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm um, focusing on the spring for side hustle series and we'll certainly be promoting it and putting out some flyers and we'll do some posts and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and also if you're interested in, in side hustles, interested in entrepreneurship, um, you know, my contact information is online. Uh, and I'm always interested in hearing what people want at the side hustle series because there's a ton of different things that can be included. And we tr- kind of took a shot at it, figured out what, what m- might interest people, but I'm, I, yeah. there's so many things and I'd really love to hear from students and hear what they want to learn, hear what they um, are interested in having in these, these sessions. So certainly if you're a student that's out there and thinking, I really want to do a side hustle, I'm going to go to this series, but I want to make sure she talks about Instagram hashtags. Let me know because I can definitely include that. And I can also include some people that I work with in the community that have skill sets in those areas. So I'm very big in finding people with skill sets and can mentor and students in ways that I'm not necessarily completely well versed in. So I will find someone to tell you what to do if I can't tell you myself. Awesome. That's fantastic. And um- We appreciate your insight and look forward to learning more from you at Bauer. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm Hava Schultz, and this was Kelly McCormick, host of the Art of the Side Hustle workshop series. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Working Wisdom podcast series from the C.T. Bauer College of Business brought to you by the Working Families Initiative. The initiative aims to provide support and access for women in business school and the workforce and to generate research that organizations can use to implement policies and standards to benefit a diverse workforce. For more information about Bauer College and this podcast series, visit www.bauer.uh.edu slash podcasts.